Hello and welcome back. So, I'm going to start this video with some backstory here before I actually get to the printer. Lately I've been browsing around looking at 3D printers, just trying to find something to eventually replace my CR6SE. Uh, actually my dad ended up coming across the Solval line of printers and he told me about them. Specifically the SV06. He's always been interested in Prusa printers, but uh, he doesn't print enough to justify the price tags. So the SV06 being a Prusa clone was basically right up his alley. And honestly, mine too. It looks like a great printer for the price. We were suddenly sending reviews of the printer back and forth to each other, and then one weekend I was out shrimping with my friend, only to come home to an Amazon box at my front door. In it was not only the Solval SV06 printer, but also a Solval filament dryer. I called my dad, and he said he got them both in a combo deal on Amazon for about $40 more than what the printer alone currently is on Solval's website. He went on to say that he bought it for me because he knew it wasn't going to stay at that price for long and he knew I was bummed about my CR6SE crapping out and he just wanted me to have it. I know he's not watching, but thanks dad. so I've got the printer all set up and ready to go. There's a bunch of videos on how to assemble it that are better quality than what I could make, so I decided not to film the assembly. The very first thing I decided to print after running the bed leveling setup was a calibration cube. And it looks like I need to adjust some Z offset settings, uh, but other than that, it's decent. But now, on to the good stuff. The upgrades. The first upgrade I decided to print was this filament guide. I used purple Overture PLA for the majority of these prints, and I'm starting to wish I had some filament that's the same shade of blue that the printer already has on it. If anyone has found one that matches, let me know in the comments. I'm not sure how important this guide is yet, but it looks good, and it was well designed. The tolerances are spot on. Now you'll notice I took the whole filament holder off to put this on, but I'm pretty sure you don't have to. You should only have to remove the spool holder and just slide it down. I figured that out afterward, of course. After that, I printed the risers I designed a while back for the Ender 3 and the CR6SE. I used black Priline TPU for these. They work with this printer as well. They're just sideways compared to the Creality printers. And look at all that space underneath. There's no storage drawer on this printer, so this will be a good place to put a case holding all the tools. Which brings me to my next design. I have this case that my Winsen 5015 fans were shipped in, and it's just sitting here. So I decided to design this divider for it to hold some of the tools. And I can hide it right under the printer, so I'll always know where they are. The next thing I printed was this rear cover for the LCD screen. This is another good design that makes a satisfying click when it snaps into place. Then I printed out these extrusion covers and this cable guide for the bed heater cable coming off of the main board back here. It does a good job of keeping the cable from kinking or getting onto the bed while printing. Alright, and as far as printed upgrades goes, that's all I've got for now. However, I did install some LED lights on the printer with an on-off switch. So if you want to learn how I did that, stick around. I had some 24 volt LED strips laying around that I cut to the length I wanted. I could have gone all the way up the sides like I did with my Ender 3 Pro years ago, but I didn't think it was necessary since I never really print anything that tall to begin with. I grabbed some braided wire, which I believe was either 20 or 22 gauge, and one of these single pole, single throw rocker switches I bought a bundle of a while back on Amazon. After that I grabbed some heat shrink and my soldering iron. I also designed and printed this little switch holder that will eventually mount to the printer with a T-nut. Alright, so I've made a basic wiring diagram here. If you want to do this to your printer, just come back and pause here. I'll also pin a comment with the timestamp. Okay, so the first thing I did was unplug and remove the power supply so I could get to the terminals easier later. Then I ran the wire to check the length I needed. 
and cut a little extra just to be safe. From there, I tinned the tips of the wires and the pads on the LED strips. This made soldering them together so much easier. Once the wires were soldered on, I slipped the heat shrink over the ends and just used the upper side of the iron to shrink it. Once everything was wired up, it was time to test before I even attempted to install them. On this power supply, I loosened one screw on the positive side and one screw on the negative side and slipped the corresponding wires in. Then tighten the screws down. Should be able to test it now. Power supply is on. Let me zoom out a little bit. Flip the switch. Hey! We have lights. Next, I remove the whole gantry. I didn't necessarily have to remove the gantry, but if your LED strips aren't thin and flexible like mine, you'll probably have to do this. So I wanted to show it. With the gantry off, you can slide the LED strips into the channel on the inside of the extrusion. I started with the right side, fed the second LED strip through and under the bed and around the frame and up to the opposite side and slid it into the left channel. Then I put the whole gantry back on, being sure not to pinch the wires. If your LED strips are thin and flexible like mine, you might not have to remove the gantry. Here I just put one side of a strip in and used an allen key to push the other side in. Then I slid my fingernail down the strip to get the whole thing inside. Next I took some zip ties and cleaned up the wires hanging under the bed. I used yellow zip ties so you could see where I put them. I decided I wanted the switch to be on the outside of the right extrusion, so I trimmed the power wire to stop in that general area, and I trimmed the ground wire to where I thought the power supply terminal would be. Before I installed the switch, I soldered and crimped an insulated spade crimp connector to the end of the ground wire, and one on a separate piece of wire that will run from the positive side of the power supply to the switch, being sure to run the wires through the hole at the bottom of the mount. After that, I installed the power supply back on the printer. Then I installed the switch holder with a screw and T-nut. You don't have to put yours here, but I wanted it to be discreet and near the power supply. I unintentionally mounted this so that the switch would be upside down, but it doesn't really bother me. Just keep the orientation in mind if you're planning to do this. Normally, I would have crimped on some disconnect terminals here to go to the switch, but I didn't have the right size. So I just soldered the wires on and put heat shrink over them. I recommend testing again right here before you push the switch in, because the only way to take the switch out is to unscrew the T-nut and then push it from the back. Push the switch in and it should lock when it backs up far enough. And that's it. Let's check out how it looks. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever.